uh, Mark focuses more on the works than the words of Christ. Mark focuses more on the works than the words of Christ. Now, I say that just in comparison to the other Gospels. Mark's is focusing on the deeds. In fact, Mark doesn't mention many of the discourses of Christ, but focuses on the deeds. Focuses on uh, the, the action of Christ. And this is helpful in two ways. Uh, first of all, it teaches us and this is not the primary way, but it's one thing that we learn from this, uh, that we are to be not only talkers, but doers. In fact, the Gospel of Mark is, is really a grand illustration of what James says in, in chapter 2, verse 22, that faith is made perfect by works. Uh, and, and so that's what we see in Jesus as an example, that we are to be not only talkers, but doers, as Christ is shown to us in, Mark, uh, in Mark's Gospel. But the most important thing that we learn from this it's not that we are to be doers, but that Christ was a doer. Mark sets that forth so clearly that, that Christ was doing, was working for us. Uh, and we are saved, you see, not because Christ talked about the kingdom. As important as it is, I'm so glad that Christ preached the kingdom when He went through the towns. He preached the kingdom and, and every place He went, He's preaching the kingdom. But that's not what saves us, you see. What saves us is that Christ brought in a kingdom by His deeds, by His perfect life, by His sacrificial death. Christ ushered in the kingdom by His deeds. You see, He fought against Satan. He didn't just talk about Satan. He didn't just talk against Him. He fought against Him. He crushed His head. He performed miracles. He overcame uh, the deficiencies that were evident in the lives of, of those whom He encountered. He walked this earth faithfully to perform the will of God. He was a doer. In fact, as one commentator has said, Mark presents the, the ministry of Christ as one of strenuous activity. Task follows task with almost breathless rapidity. In fact, there's one word that's very special to Mark. And you might note this down. Uh, we see this time and time again, many more times than in the other Gospels. In fact, more times than all the, the entire New Testament combined. And that is the word immediately. Very interesting. Mark is always saying, and immediately Christ went there. And then immediately Christ went there. And then immediately He, he did this. And then immediately He said that. What's Mark focusing on? He's focusing on the movement of Christ, the work of Christ, the resolve of Christ to be a doer. Of course, it's true that <clears throat> in His doing, He sets a pattern for us. But what I want you to, to grab onto here is that He also comforts us with the promise that it is done. And that's what Christ shows us in the Gospel of Mark. He's doing and doing and doing until it was done. And that's the Gospel. Not that we uh, have to be doing and doing and doing and doing, but that Christ was doing until it was done. Christ, you see, is the ultimate doer. Does anyone out here ever feel wore out? Ever feel like all we're ever doing is moving and doing and acting and, and doing this and doing that? Uh, I'm not suggesting this is a good thing. In fact, Christ... Uh, at least Mark records at least ten times where Christ withdrew to, uh, to be with His disciples, to be with God. But I'm suggesting that in our weariness, in our ceaseless activities, we, get a, we, we catch a glimpse of what Christ was doing for us. Christ wore Himself out for us. And that's what we see in Mark's Gospel, that He labored for us so that we could rest in Him. He labored for us so that we could rest in Him. And that's brought out most clearly in Mark's Gospel. So first of all, Mark focuses more on the works than on the words of Christ. He does focus on the words, but there's a special emphasis on works.